Madrid Gay Elections Commissioner continues to update the nation on the free, fair, and transparent conduct of the 2015 general and regional elections. It's now 19 hours 15, just over 13 hours since uh, poll was open. One hour and 15 minutes almost since it has been closed. And to brief you and um, give you an overview of how the voting process went during the day today will be our chief election officer, Mr. Keith Lowingfield. Sir. I'll invite the chairman to say those initial words. I, thank you, CEO. Thank you, PRO. Before we begin to give you the results of what we are been experiencing over the last uh, hours since we last met together, allow me to make an appeal uh, to the citizenry, to the political parties that are contesting these elections, that uh, peace and tranquility must prevail. This peace and tranquility cannot prevail if within an environment of turbulence. I would like to ask the persons who are milling around polling stations to disperse and go home. I have asked that before. I have demanded it almost of the political parties for them to explain to their loyalists that the ballot boxes that they all are tending to believe that they are in some way securing are of a letter, lesser import than the statement of poll that will be distilled out of the content of those ballot boxes. With other words, we are t saying that once that statement of poll is posted outside of the polling station, then the, the ballot boxes and the content of the ballot boxes really are for historical relevance. Clearly, there is nothing you can do to disrupt at this point in time what has happened uh, over the last 12 hours during the polling period. There is no sense exciting yourselves, I speak to the citizenry, over really nothing at this point in time. I have spoken to the president who is prepared to endorse what I've just said. I have not gotten in touch with Mr. Granger, but I have gotten in touch with Mr. Uh, Dr. Rupnarayan, who said he would carry my exact message uh, to Mr. Granger, who either will call me to ask questions about what I'm saying, or to immediately endorse what I've said, namely that we need that peace and tranquility as of now. Already there have been too many episodes of turbulence, not very great turbulence, turbulence <coughs> nevertheless. But I'm saying that the political party leaders, especially those of the major political parties, that they have to address the citizenry of this country. We cannot allow a beautifully run elections, and we have from all reports, and we have been receiving kudos from the external observers, the local observers, the citizens who have gone out to vote. They're saying what a wonderfully administrated elections this was. The logistics will prove itself tomorrow. The technical aspects went very well. Let us not have a situation in which that, what we have achieved, is undermined and destroyed. Thank you for the moment. I will be helping the CEO address some of these issues uh, that he will now uh, speak about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the media, as you're aware, um, all is closed at 6 p.m. after 12 um, continuous hours of voting today. Um, from all reports from districts 1 and 210, um, polling in the main um, went smoothly. There were a few incidents that the chairman referenced earlier um, that the police no doubt will be doing their own investigations. Um, 
as the days progress. Um, from now on, what is happening right now um, is that with the closure of polls, the count, a very critical subset of, of elections management is taking place. Um, it's a very simple process um, where all the votes in those boxes will be counted by our presiding officers in the presence of agents from the respective political parties. It is hoped for the conclusion there will be tacit agreement between and among all present during the conduct of the count. When counting is, is concluded, as the chairman would reference, the statements of poll are prepared. One statement, one of those statements is meant to be posted at a conspicuous location outside of the polling station. The other copies uh, will be given to all agents present. A copy is designed to be forwarded to the returning officer and another copy to, to the chief elections officer. So at the conclusion of the count, we'll arrive at a position where numerically we'll know um, the results of um, individual polling stations for all 2,099 locations. During the course of the evening, um, those statements intended from those, those during the course of the evening, the statements intended for, it, for the CEO for himself will be um, brought to, to this location where they will be um, checked for accuracy of information, etc. before we keep, we inform the nation as to, as to the results. We expect to release the information provided to me through the medium of um, those POs, those presiding officers, to the returning officers, um, to me, um, to be released periodically starting at about 11 o'clock um, this evening. We have treated with, uh, with all the issues that were brought, that were brought to us, um, and you would have heard from the houses from, from the major parties, what they would have said relative to, to the conduct of, of, of operations today. They were no doubt pleased with the turnout and so on. And the, in the main, voting went very smoothly um, with a few hiccups, as it were, here and there. There is, that is what I want to say um, to you at this point in time as we await the outcome of the come at all polling stations across the land. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Serge Bali, on your opening statement, and given the fact that the political parties have through the day indicated that they will be issuing with uh, filing with GCOM several reports of uh, perceived or reported irregularity. Do you feel uh, political pressure um, at this time in terms of the work of GCOM being caught, let's say, between a hard place and a rock? <coughs> political pressure? Pressuring who? Me? GCOM. <laughs> we are not some other aspect of GCOM. Um, no. No. I feel vexation, I feel frustration, not so much frustration, I don't know that word, but vexation I know well. To see that all that we've prepared for over the years in the inter-electoral period, to see that all the work over the last 
six months and before is being threatened. Um, the results of that work, the sequelae from that work, uh, that is would make anybody blood boil. However, we have made of sterner stuff. And uh, I'm too old to become uh, distraught to any great degree. However, my country is dear to me. And to see what I've experienced in my youth again come to pass, especially on my watch, is not very helpful to my own equanimity. So, to answer your question, no. No pressure in that sense, but a feeling of despondency because of activities that are beyond our control. Mr. So Wong, we'll answer again, Hong Kong. Three questions, sir. Um, you said the first results will be released um, by 11. Can you say we have a cutoff point where these will stop being transmitted for the night? Um, we will start receiving results, all things being equal, and, and you understand the, the geography um, like I do, um, at the earliest. I assume that by 9, 10, results will start, um, those envelopes for me will um, start arriving at, at this command center here. Um, that will continue, no doubt, until we would have received the 2,299. I indicated to you before that the statements from the hinterland districts, districts 1, 7, 8, and 9, they are very likely to be here at the center sometime tomorrow. Um, so during, during the evening, we expect that statements um, will be arriving from districts 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, um, or parts thereof. Um, so we'll be receiving, I know, from district 2, most of the coast may very well get here by 5 a.m., and those probably from the Pomeroon, um, Rafa, the Akowini, and so on, um, will be coming at some time later. And the same thing with district 3. Um, the entire coast, no doubt, will be here um, before 5 p.m. And those from the rivers as far as Macora and the islands um, are going to be here probably early tomorrow morning, similar with 4. Similarly with 4 and 5. Um, what I do know is that during the course of this evening, I will be receiving statements from all the coastal districts, um, a subset of, of the statements from, from, from the airport stations. Those statements, I, I dare say, um, in every instance, um, from wherever they're coming, will be under the escort of members of the police force. Um, Mr. Walter, my question was transmission of the um, results, like in, in a similar fashion as was done in 2011. Will, will that be broadcasted? We will be providing, in a preliminary way, um, results, those that we would have received. We would, in, uh, in summary, be providing those reports um, to the viewership. That is to say, we will not be doing um, statement by statement by statement until we get to the 2,299. We will provide what we want for to as summary statements. And, and merely scroll to see the results of Barometer Division 111111. Um, these are the contesting parties, you know them, and these are the results as they relate to valid votes. And that continues throughout the night, or they will cut off like there was last Or oh, we'll be on every two hours once we start um, and provide the, the information um, to you. Right, now, sir, you mentioned that there were hiccups. Um, we have one of the major concerns raised by one of the major political parties is the issue of multiple voting. Now we have um, at least four cases in several districts. Um, Mr. Dan Paul in um, on East Coast. I, I give you a list there. Those those are the names we're working with. How do you respond to these concerns? These are major issues. People saying that they turned up to polling stations 
and they were told that they voted already. A lot of people is turning up to polling stations and saying, you know, well, um, being given tender ballots and that sort of thing. I am pausing because I truly do not understand the question. Because there is a certain methodology that we have implemented that precludes that possibility. That someone could have voted for this Mr. Dan Paul, would, his name would have to be Dan Paul, he would have to have an ID card that says he's Dan Paul, his picture would be on his ID card, as well as in the folio, to prove that he is Mr. Dan Paul. So this person, this elusive person, the last time I used the word figment of imagination, uh, someone took me up on that. In fact, only today I was told that I am dealing with my own delusions and reality uh, by one of the persons who would want to lead us for the next five years. But I'm saying to you that the real Mr. Dan Paul with his ID card now, I can't see how someone would have voted for him. He now comes up with his ID card, which is the same, has to be the same ID card with all the data about his bio data that is in the folio that how, that's why I say I don't understand the question. It is pretty much for me an impossibility. Now I hear about, I think you mentioned it, something about the, the ink and the rubbing out. Well, as I mentioned earlier today, I tried with the caustic soda, the bleach. Somebody suggested Marvix. So I'm not making a point for Marvix. But, <laughs> but the thing is, it didn't dent this this thing. So I was told it's wrong. Why you used the wrong thing? You should have used methylated spirit. You see, by the time I'm finished with all these methodologies and all these suggestions, I think I will not. I will lose my epidermis. <laughs> that is the skin at the top. Of it. <laughs> Nonsense. Now I, perhaps some people can do it, and some people are prepared to take off the entire layer of skin. For what reason? I, that is beyond me as well. Chairman, I understand what you're saying when you say... But once you understand what I'm saying, but you knew I would say that, so don't ask me that question. But I, I just, because it goes nowhere. I, I just, but I would the like the to know, other than Mr. Dan Raj, who are the other three? The, the last... Dan, Dan Paul, Mr. Uh, Dr. Raleigh. Somebody's report, interviewed Mr. Dan Paul, yes? We have that information. The, That's not what I asked you. Yes, and I, I, I submitted that. I give you that. You, somebody has interviewed Mr. Dan Paul. The last so look, no, no, but that's a before, uh, before you go, I just want to, I, <laughs> look, I think in the, in our movement towards ensuring that elections in Guyana are truly um, free, free, and transparent, we have gone um, to great lengths um, over time to ensure that all the methodologies apply as uh, far as practical, it will be impossible for persons to um, to beat the system. For any multiple voting, as you you're referencing, it's for me. It has to be collaboration between and among all all present at, at a polling station. Um, you would have heard your friends or friends from Unisor um, at their statement saying. We really go above and beyond um, what many other Latin and Caribbean countries do to ensure that our system is, is foolproof. And to have that be my thinking at this point in time is that there may very well be quite a lot of collab collaboration between and among all the persons present, GCOM staff, the agents, the observers, and all that there is. Because nowhere else in, in elections management around would you find a list and uh, a folio and 
the entire methodology we employ to enfranchise people in the first instance. So we go far away to ensure all that all that is there. And, um, we will really have to do some digging. And as I said to you earlier, I really want to check out this for myself and see how best. No, now the, la the last interview that the began Chronicle did was with a 65-year-old man from Danard Street. His name was Solomon Ashmore. Um, he he turned up at this polling station and he was told that he voted already, and he was very upset. Um, no doubt. No. He was he was he was told how do we address it's real incidents like incidents like these, um, <coughs> in spite of your assurances. Real incidents. This was an actual interview that we did with a 65-year-old man. See, sir, madam, I have to tell you, your reality got to be different from mine. I'm telling you, because this real incident, the chief election officer has just spelled out, perhaps superficially, the amount of uh, things that we put in place to prevent multiple voting. It is, I suppose it can happen, anything can happen. But if I have to look at the choices that I have, believe in. I believe in my system. And not in some man, some 65-year-old man who turns up and says, when I went to the thing, the, the, the polling station, I was not allowed in. But look, the chief has said what he has said. We will investigate this Mr. Is, is he Mr. Danraj? Or that's no, no, another that, one. That's another one. Suleiman that's Nashville. another one. A man in Danraj Street. Yes. Yes. And Suleiman something. And which polling station was this? Um, that is the polling station where Region 4, polling station number 413252B, um, the polling Gordon Lester was okay. the young person okay. presenting officer there. And uh, I don't know when the PRO is uh, going to have his next, um, his next media conversation, but uh, I hope by then to have an answer to at least one of those two. I don't know if Mr. Dan Raj is uh, Dan, Dan, Dan Paul. You know, if Mr. Dan, Dan Paul is in Dan Raj, whatever. Uh, if no, he is no, sleeping in his bed in his in his home, or if he has been uh, being questioned elsewhere. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Longfield, Mr. Paul, and yes, we've had several reports of unrest in Sapphire, Tocqueville, and several other areas in Georgetown. Can you say what Tukum is doing to about these issues at this point? Our role is to conduct and mandate conduct the elections. Um, if they're on rest, then my colleagues across the way who are trained specifically that will have to treat with that. All the instances of unrest, as you put it, that um, were reported, those reports are with the police. We are trained, are competent to train to do that. And no doubt they will be treated with that. We have some reports of some attempts to infiltrate the police stations, but these were thwarted by like, police officers. Can you comment on these? They were thwarted? Yes. Kudos to the police. On India salary. <laughs> Look, if, if anything is is to be interest to the system and the police would have done whatever they had to do, then they'll be very thankful um, to the efficiency of, of the boys in the police force, right? Sir, do you have any reports of three ballot boxes being stolen in the fire? Um, no, I, I have. I went to the fire this morning. I mean, this afternoon. Well, no, I was there this morning. Before I met you at 12, I was in Sapphire. I have received the report on ballot, box, on ballot boxes movement relative to what you communicated or what the media communicated was this morning in South Trumpet. Um, so I, don't, I, I didn't know that there was another. Thanks, sir. I'm uh, going to the news source. Uh, both the gentlemen to the front. When you hear of the Dan Ball story and the apparent Sophia story, uh, do you think GCOM would have failed in its public education drive to have people truly understand the system and how it works? An answer sometime tonight would be good. <laughs> You know, it would not be politically correct to give you an no, answer. Microphone. Uh, 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 
it wouldn't be politically correct to give you an answer that I think this nation already knows. The level of our ability to absorb knowledge based on a soundness of many years of education might not be that which I have experienced growing up myself. I, of course, am not, and you're not going to quote me as saying that I'm saying this, I'm not speaking of the dummification of Guyana. But I will tell you, and you would have experienced, that in giving a person a telephone number of seven digits, uh, it takes an effort. That's where we are, to a large extent. I can say these things now, not only because I'm not afraid, but because these are things that need to be said. Now our civic and voter education program and our PR program, I cannot follow. I know there are commissioners who have told me and have said, let's start this thing early. Many of these things should be started uh, a year before the elections. Well, one has to be careful of that. And that was my position. For example, they were telling us that we should spend all of this money and all of the education on uh, the local government elections. And I said, but you don't know that there will be local government elections. And there were. Lots of money spent on preparing other people like the IRI and other institutions. Uh, I think also, had we gone much earlier, because that is what some, or some of the bloggers would say, they should have done this before. Uh, and I am saying, no, they are strategic, tactical times when you start the bombardment, and you do it with such a blitz, in a blitz way, such intensity, that even if a part of it is absorbed, then we are ahead of the game. I am quite pleased with what Mr. Francois, and myself, and Mr. Vishnu Prasad, who is not here, uh, what we put together, of course, under the, the guidance of our chief election officer, uh, in the newspapers, in the media, uh, electronic media, in the radio. Yes, I, I'm pleased about that. For the first time, for the first time, we have had sign language for the people who are hearing impaired. For the first time today, blind voters, without the assistance of other people, uh, were able to vote using a stencil that we've created. These were innovations that helped in that civic and voter education program that together with other agencies like the Commission on Disabilities, we didn't do it alone. You people helped as well, you the media. And I must say, in many cases, for free as, as part of your civic duty. And I would have to say, I'm sure it could never be 100%, but I will have to say that it was good enough and those who do not understand might be not wanting to understand. Too much writing, perhaps we reach an age uh, that you use the texting more, uh, whatever. We have media, we had put up our website that explains everything. Uh, civic and voter education, know where your polling station is. Type in your name, search Bali, Robert, uh, immediately, within a second, it's you get your polling station, and so on. Uh, I am not displeased with the way we went. And uh, we have hotlines. Anybody not understanding, but want the easy way, call us up. They have called us up. Political parties were also not bashful in civically and uh, using uh, their methodologies to help with their civic and voter education. Only in today's paper, one of the parties, I think, said, if you have any difficulty uh, finding your polling station, call this number. Of course, they're using our data. Uh, and let's face it, we are not the ones uh, to, that want to be elected. Uh, and therefore, those who wish to be elected should be pushing the civic and voter education equal and straight with us, which they have done to a large extent. I think it was not too bad. How do you think it could be made better? Sure. I'll be
almost perfect still leaves the space for perfect. And uh, sir, you mentioned earlier that you had a conversation uh, with President Ramatar this evening. Uh, his party, the Bill's Progressive Party, Civic, they have indicated that they have reports, and uh, you will have heard from the young lady, about multiple voting and several cases of discrepancies across the country. Could you say if those concerns were raised in your conversation with Mr. Ramatar? The answer is no. And the answer is yes. The yes part is that I just before I came here, I had a conversation with President Ramatar. But throughout the day, I was having conversations with Mr. Ramatar because he was mentioning these things. My question or my uh, part of the conversation was always, please give me the data. Please give me the polling station. Please give me uh, the area in which this thing happened. And I need, I need the proof. You're going to have to give it to the police. Whatever proof I get, we'll have to, through the CEO, go to the, to the police for them to investigate. So yes, Mr. Ramata and myself have been having these conversations. The first part of the conversation, well, the first many conversations had to do with complaints uh, with the system. The last one had to do with what I said, that I needed his endorsement. Uh, for what I opened this uh, media center conversation with. And as of now, you're still waiting on the proof? No, I've said what I've said. It's, it's, you have, no, you're still uh, waiting on the proof with the discrepancies. Yeah, you're evidence. still waiting on that. The evidence? Yes. <laughs> well, some I think have come. I hear about some Dan Raj of Dan Raj Street or whatever. <laughs> so, yes. Chairman, a, a quick, a quick follow-up. How will GCOM um, deal with uh, these cases if, they're, if it's proven that the presiding officers allowed people to vote who weren't supposed to. How well how you can deal with that? It's his staff. <laughs> the commission have the commission has uh, which I am the head of, we, we have already made our position clear on these things. Uh, there are levels of iniquity. But the CEO will decide. Uh, we have had this in the past. We have already a standard operating uh, procedure for this. We've had, uh, in the 2011 elections, one presiding officer uh, dictating to the assistant chief election officer, the chief, the deputy chief, the chief, and the chairman. She was bigger than all of us. I think she lasted five minutes after that. <laughs> no, but I think the, the, the CEO we might want to say what he intends to do when we get these uh, data. Are you saying, sir, it's a total impossibility with the GCOM system? No, no system, system, you will appreciate, no system um, is, is pure. And therefore, if, if we find in our investigation, then um, our procedures will dictate what, what action uh, will be taken to those from you know the headline is going to be Lowenfield admits no system can be pure. You know, let me let me say something while we, while we are this thing with the media. You are not going to withdraw yourselves should we have a confirmation, God forbid. And say, oops, you know, we we didn't mean that and we didn't do that. And we didn't egg this on. And we didn't uh, say these things. And we didn't mean that. No, you've got to be active this time, you hear? Somebody was asking something just now. Dr. Yes, ma'am, my friend. Samantha Allen, Sarah Pierce. In your open statement, you said you would have experienced certain things in your youth that is now happening under your watch. Would you want to expand? <laughs> things that I've seen happen in my youth, I said I do not speak. I do not wish to have in any way, shape, or form repeated. My youth goes a long way back. And that goes back to February the 16th, 1962, for example, which is interesting because 50 years later, there was not even an anniversary, not even a mention of February the 16th, 1962, Black Friday, when the commercial area of Water Street and portions of the street that I was born and grew up in, Rob Street, Lacey Town, that border, upper class. 
uh, it was something that you do not want to remember. That's true, but one should not forget that. And I think that often in the past, we have had critical situations and the leaders probably remembering the, those days of yore, the 1962, perhaps the 1964, brought us back from the precipice. And I'm hoping with statements like I'm asking uh, Mr. Granger and Mr. Ramatar to make that they will again bring us back from any potential uh, unrest that we might have in the, tonight and the coming days. Uh, Dr. Sujbal, Power Manager, Yan Times. Could you, you mentioned the sp special sentinels for the visually impaired. Uh, could you explain how this was done? Were these materials available at all polling stations across the country? Yes, ma'am. It's very easy. All polling stations. This was a work actually that we carried out and we paid for, but under the advice of the people that are visually impaired. It was a stencil of the same size of the ballot paper. The stencil, however, had, uh, what is the word, holes? Holes would be the best word. Uh, apertures uh, right down adjacent to the political parties. So the person that is blind would uh, go down the line because the presiding officer would have said, told him, uh, number one is the APNU, number two is the IP, number three is the NIP, number four is the PPP, number five is the, is the TUF, number six is the URP. I, I think that was the sequence. And he wants to vote for number three, which would be the I, N, N, I, IP. He goes down one, two, three, and at that point, he puts his X. Removes the stencil, gives back the presiding officer, and he folds it and carries it. And he does that without assistance, assistance that he has may have no trust in, and that he doesn't know ever if that assistant uh, voted the way he, the blind person, wanted uh, to be part of it. So it seemed to have worked. I've shared it with some of my colleagues in the Caribbean. Uh, they're very enamored with the possibility. We will not pay the difference. We cannot use Braille, by the way, because as we have been advised, there might be three persons in this three persons in this entire country that know to be Braille. And as one WAC said, uh, again coming back to our education status, we might have difficulty in doing it in English, uh, much less in Braille. Dr. Suish Bali, Andrew Reeves, Nineteen News. I'm sorry, could you tell us exactly um, when the statement of poor would have gotten here? Um, what would be the, um, the steps taken um, to announce or make for the Did accounts? you, thank you, did you, were you here this morning for the first uh, program? Yes, I was here. But you didn't hear the Chief Election Officer spell it out step by step? And no, 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 no. I didn't you didn't hear that. He's going to do it again. <laughs> thank you very much. See, that's why when you say, don't you think the, the PR program failed? Um, Surely you can't use one uh, nice to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. If I was going back there, if you see what I mean. Um, on, on arrival at the, at the command center, the, um, the statements will be received by by staff of the operations department in this particular instance, those of the logistics division. And they'll be recorded on the broadsheet provided because you're aware we have 2,299 um, stations and there's a broadsheet that provides by district that takes us to that number. Once the statements are received by um, the operations team, they are recorded as having been received, and then they are passed on to the commissioners. And each commissioner, or at all times there will be two commissioners who will be present during the course of this evening, tomorrow, whatever, until the exercise is concluded. 
and the commissioners will in initial two commissions, two commissioners will initial um, every statement received by the operations team. One commissioner from the governing party and one commissioner from the combined opposition. When that is completed to the satisfaction of um, the ops team, those statements will be um, taken to my I, to the IT um, section and they will merely scan it. They will scan that statement and then forward the original copy to the chief election officer. So that, that this is the stages involved in the process. No doubt along the way, all the checks and balances required, whether arithmetic or otherwise, will be delved into so that the balance based on what they would have received, I don't think I need to get into that. So that, that is the process that takes it from District 654, wherever, um, to the office of the CEO. Thank you very much, Mr. Lowenfield. It might be yourself for Mr. Serge Valley could respond to this question. We know that the foreign missions have been in the field today as well, uh, assisting or uh, observing various polling stations. And uh, I know that uh, when there were concerns raised about the probability of things happening at polling stations, they have also been using their personnel to try to verify uh, whether or not these things were ever an issue. Can I ask you if you have been in contact with the foreign missions, particularly the ABC missions, and uh, how at all uh, instrumental was uh, this, uh, their involvement in the observation of today's elections? Chairman. Uh, well, I was the contact person with the foreign observers as well as the local observers from the high, high commissions and the embassies. Uh, I can answer that very fruitfully and simply. We received from every single one of them kudos. How well things were run, how simple they were. On one occasion, the UNISUR team said, bravo. However, we found that we were, our team, our staff, were not receptive enough to the elderly and the, and the pregnant ladies. Now, that one shocked me because I, I do believe that our culture here in India would never allow an elderly person to stand up at the back of a line or, you know, and not bring them uh, forward. A heavily pregnant woman, a visibly pregnant woman, uh, standing in a line and nobody allowing her to go forward, I, I cannot conceive of that, uh, of that uh, situation. But yet they saw that. Uh, they didn't go into detail and I didn't ask them. Perhaps they meant uh, and that's Unisura. They meant that uh, there was no ramp for the physically disabled. Well, the problem there was, uh, as we were going to get, well, I would imagine over a thousand ramps, um, but it became a, a technical, logistical problem from the donor country. In this case, it was Brazil uh, who had promised us that. Uh, it was a whole commercial problem. Not that we have to pay anything. But anyway, also, however, the disabled the society, the commission for the people with disabilities could not give us in which areas their membership uh, would be located. So if we knew in Success Village or wherever there, was, uh, there are persons with disabilities, we could have a priority. We, we could have gone in there even before and ensured that uh, the ramp was built and so on. But they couldn't give us that. And to go and build 2,299 ramps, that's not possible. However, all of our buildings, I think this was reported already, all of our buildings, the new buildings which we have built and which we have commissioned, uh, they have the ramps uh, already built in. But unfortunately, um, but I think also we tried our best uh, to have only on the ground floor, we use that possibility of people uh, going in and, and uh, voting, people who have a difficulty uh, in, in, in walking to get it. We didn't put it upstairs. Also, um, on occasion, during today's activities, 
the entire polling station translocated itself to the, I will say, corpse side and allowed it, uh, people that were seriously physically disabled to vote. And I thought, kudos to them, including the party agents. Uh, I was told of that. I couldn't tell you which station, if you know. But um, it was here in Region 4. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you very much for coming. We really have to end at this point in time because we have to come back with you in three hours time, 23 hours. We will be here to give you... you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we will be here, trust me. And I know many of you will be here to see the fourth set of results coming from the Election Commission. Thank you once again. See you at 23 hours. <laughs>